Do you ever sit there waiting on new retro hardware to arrive and think, man, I need to mentally prepare for this thing because that's exactly where I'm at right now. I've got a brand new C64 Ultimate on order and it should be here sometime in February or March. And while I'm waiting, instead of pacing the floor like a kid before Christmas, I figured, let's do something productive. Let's get into the Commodore state of mind. So today, we're installing and exploring Commodore OS Vision 3.0 on real hardware, a modern 64-bit Linux-based operating system that asks a very dangerous question. What if Commodore never died? What if they survived the 90s and they skipped a few decades and they showed back up with a modern OS but kept the soul? Let's find out. Now, quick clarification right up front, because I know some of you are already in the comment section typing up something. Commodore OS Vision is not what runs on the C64 Ultimate. This isn't a preview of that or a firmware leak or anything like that. This is something different. Commodore OS Vision is a retro-futuristic Linux distribution. It's based on Debian, and it's built as the default OS for modern Commodore-branded machines. It's basically a love letter to Commodore history written in Linux, and I love this kind of stuff. Now, Commodore OS Vision describes itself as a retro-futuristic vision of what Commodore might have produced in some sort of alternate timeline. Now, Vision 3.0 is the current release. It's maintained since July 2025, and get this, it's completely free to download. They also claim that it's the biggest games-oriented Linux distribution ever produced. Now, that's a bold statement, and naturally, we're going to poke that with a stick. Now, if you grew up with Commodore machines like I did, the brand means something. It wasn't just hardware. It was a feeling. Friendly computers, approachable programming, and games, and demos, music, creativity. Commodore OS Vision is clearly trying to recreate that vibe, not by emulating one machine, but by creating an entire Commodore-themed environment. And honestly, that alone makes it worth checking out. So for this project, I started off by downloading the zip file from their website. Now, it's compressed. It's about 36, 37 gigabytes. So have patience if you have slow internet, because it's going to take a while. After that, I flashed that using Rufus onto a USB thumb drive. I had a 128 gig one, figured that'd be enough space, and it was. Now, that process took a long time. So if you're doing it, just be patient. Now, for the actual hardware I'm going to be using, I'm using a Lenovo Think Center. It's a 64-bit machine. I swapped it out to a blank hard drive so that I could keep my Windows 11 install separate. Now, this is, I think, appropriate. There's no RGB nonsense. It's just a solid little business PC. So, it felt appropriate. All right, now it's the moment of truth. We're going to start the process. I've got the USB stick in there. Computer should be rebooting here. And it should automatically boot into their Commodore OS main menu where we can then select what we're going to do with it. So let's see what it's going to do here. Okay, there we go. So we've got the main screen here. Uh, I'm going to go down because I'm in central time and change the time zone to central. Language is good. So we'll go back to the main menu. And now we should be able to load the Commodore OS Vision. And it should run through all of its stuff here and then get us into the main Commodore OS uh, desktop where we should be able to actually install it. So let's let this go and we'll pick it back up when it's done. All right, so we're finally booted into Commodore OS and it's going to give us the welcome to Commodore OS Vision, uh, which is cool. We just have to accept that stuff. To continue to use Commodore OS Vision, you agree to the following terms. <laughs> I love the, uh, the the voice there. I mean, it just kind of adds to the whole uh, experience of the sound effects, kind of SID sound effects. Turning on the Commodore OS animated wallpaper. I'll turn it down a little bit. All right, so now it's checking the installation media to see if we can actually install this. So we'll let this go and come back to it when it's done. 
All right, well, let's get this installed. We'll follow the instructions here. All right, we want to do a regular install using the entire disk because I've got a brand new uh, SSD in there. Format, use the entire disk. All right, now we're formatting. I remember it saying to use Commodore as the computer name and the domain. So I'm going to do that. Work group can be work group. American English, time zone. Oh, let's see. Do we have Chicago in here? Yep, Chicago. System clock. All right, now we wait. It's at 12%. Uh, while we were uh, waiting for it to uh, get through that previous process, uh, the computer voice came on and said that uh, installation could take up to 40 minutes. So I guess we let it go and we'll hop back on here once it's done. All right, here we go. Looks like we're getting our first boot. Uh, it starts up with the static uh, wallpaper behind it, which is, you know, still a really nice looking uh, system. Uh, I don't think I want to change. Well, yeah, we'll change the password. We'll make it... Uh, something different all right so we'll set up a new password for it there we go not that it's probably going to make much of a difference all right so let's close this out keyboard shortcuts will help you navigate the system and use the more advanced features of commodore s vision so it looks like we got quite a few uh Shortcuts there, that's good. I'm sure we can go back and reference those later. Alright, so it's talking about emulation. Free open source Commodore system ROMs were included with Commodore OS. Uh, and Amiga emulation with original ROMs are not free for distribution. Okay. Uh, let's see. Vice is the emulator it looks like. And it looks like there's some links to download uh, other C64, Amiga ROMs, things like that. All right, so we'll go into here. It's a really clean background. Now, I believe we can go in here, uh, change desktop background, and there are all sorts of... <laughs> look at the motion on the windows. That's kind of cool. Uh, you got all sorts of different backgrounds you can choose from. Commodore-themed ones. You've got the original C64 uh, main screen, it looks like. Uh, different, uh, different Commodore OS Vision backgrounds. So that's the uh, load screen one. I kind of like that. Yeah, that's cool. We'll, uh, we'll stick with that. And the effect when the windows close out is pretty neat, too. Uh, all right, so let's uh, go up here and check out what we've got looks like in the system it's where all your preferences are hardware internet network uh the look and feel so appearance and you can edit the menus pop-ups keyboards uh well there's a lot of stuff in here personal file management preferred applications startup applications uh got administration so print settings user settings uh, the control center is uh, mate settings, so that's the the uh, OS itself. But then we've got Commodore OS settings that uh, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Commodore OS settings manager. Oh, so we can update Commodore OS right from here, which it says to do. But let's take a look through it first Editing. Before we spend time doing an update, just kind of give us an idea. Now, applications, I think, is where everything's going to be that we want to take a look at. So you've got accessories, uh, command line interface, calculator, font manager, ebook viewer, document scanner, PDF viewer and arranger, dictionary, uh, education, looks like math, paint, typing, design. You've got diagram editor, free CAD. I mean, this looks like it's a pretty loaded distribution. 
uh, for games, these are Linux games, I mean, just tons of them. I mean, the action, adventure, beat em up games, board games, uh, desktop, fantasy RPG, first person shooter, platform games, uh, puzzle games, racing, shoot 'em up, simulation, sport, and strategy. And that's just the Linux games on here. So that's, that's pretty impressive. That'll keep me busy for a while. Uh, game services, so you've got Wine, uh, Steam, Lutris, Play on Linux, Proton Tricks, Wine Tricks, uh, Graphics, uh, Amiga Deluxe Paint Clones. So you've got an Amiga Paint Clone, Desktop Paint, uh, Blender it looked like. Let me get back on that. Uh, Vector Graphics Editor, which is Inkspace, uh, Libre Sprite, PicoPixel. Uh, for internet, you've already got Firefox installed, Google Chrome, you've got Google Earth, Spotify, Qubit Torrent, uh, Zoom Workplace, Chromium Web Browser. I mean, they're, uh, I mean, this might replace my desktop out here, who knows? Uh, for Office, yeah, you got LibreOffice, uh, the, the full setup for that, it looks like. Evolution Mail and Calendar, Desktop Publisher, PDF Editor uh, for programming. For people wanting to do that, you've got Commodore OS Basic, Basic Studio. You know, one of the things that, that they wanted to do with this OS was allow it to be a place where you could go in and program for the old Commodore hardware. So they've got all of the stuff that you need to be able to do that, which I think is great. So not only is it Commodore themed, it also lets you create stuff for the actual Commodore. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, well, let's go to the basic for a minute. And I love how they emulated the uh, CRT. So, I mean, you've even got the you've got the edges of the screen. You got a little bit of flicker, not enough for it to be annoying, but uh let's uh let's try it out here. Oh, it's currently experimental. Well, darn it. Maybe that's one of the updates that I need to download. All right, so let's exit. Because this is the base install. I have not done any updates to it yet. I wanted to check it out this way first. So if we go back to applications, uh, sound, you've got Amiga Mod Music Player Tracker. Uh, you got a uh, you got a digital audio workstation, Audacity, Music Player, CD Ripper. C64 SID Music Editor, uh, music making software, LMMS, Winamp, Clone, uh, you got an Atari VCS music tracker, there's LSP plugins uh, for video, webcam software, Kodi Multimedia, OBS Studio, OpenShop Video Editor, Plex, Media Player, VLC. Uh, <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. I mean, there is a lot on here. Let's open up the Commodore 64 emulator just to see what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, looks like, uh, looks like your basic Vice, uh, emulator. So preference, key sets, whatever. I've actually never used Vice before, believe it or not, because I've always had Commodore hardware. So it looks like uh, something I'm going to have to take a look at. Maybe we'll do a vi separate video on that, but uh, disk images and all that fun stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and close out of this. And it blows it apart. That's just, that's too cool. Uh, Commodore emulators. Yeah, Amiga. There's even a Commodore 65. Uh, emulator, and then over here you've got other emulators, which is cool. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Wii, Switch, PlayStation, PS2, PS3, Sega, Master System, and Genesis, Saturn, ZX Spectrum. Uh, we've also got DOS Box, uh, the Commander X16, uh, David Murray's project emulators on there, uh, Atari Jaguar, uh, all the Ataris, Apple Macintosh, 68K emulator. Uh, J Game Base, uh, Gnome. I mean, this really, so far, I am super, super impressed with it. Well, what I'm going to do is, I think, go ahead and update 
the uh, system. Just got to figure out where I did that from before. I think it was, uh, oh, update Commodore OS. All right, well, I did want to hop on here after the update. The uh, Commodore OS Basic uh, does work now, so I think that was a, a big uh, update that they did uh, before. So it, it does work now. We can do the uh, customary 10 print hello, 20 go to 10, and... Uh, Seems to run pretty fast. The only thing I can't figure out is uh, how to stop that because they're, even the, the brake key and all that don't seem to work. So I'll have to look through those shortcuts. I'm sure there's a, uh, a, a key shortcut for that. But anyway, that's uh, the demo of Commodore OS. Let's talk a little bit more about it. So what's the big picture? Well, you know, Commodore OS Vision doesn't exist alone. The Commodore brand itself is being actively revived by people who actually care about it. Creators, and collectors, and developers, including new hardware like that C64 Ultimate that I'm waiting for. That machine is about accuracy. Commodore OS Vision is all about imagination. It's different paths, but to the same destination. My honest take on it? Well, would original Commodore engineers have shipped this in 1985? No, of course not. But does it feel like Commodore in spirit? Absolutely. It's playful, it's accessible, it's fun, and it remembers why people loved Commodore in the first place. Now, why does it matter? Well, it wasn't about replacing the C64 experience. It was about reconnecting with that mindset. And honestly, this just made me more excited for what's coming up next. Now, if you've ever wondered what a modern Commodore OS might look like, this is definitely worth checking out. I'll leave some links below if you want to download it or read more about it. And when my C64 Ultimate arrives, we're going to go deep. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any more coming up. And make sure to tell me your first Commodore memory in the comments. Or let me know what you think of Commodore OS. You know, once you've owned a Commodore, you never really leave Commodore. Until next time, happy listening, happy vintage computing, and we'll see you later.